Havoc is an offensive security tool and post-exploitation framework with command and control capabilities created by C Spider, and the S is the letter five, and it's freely available on GitHub. Now, one aspect of this framework is that it uses indirect syscalls and dynamic API resolution at runtime. We've got this sample here, which is of the Havoc framework. Now, this is a particular implant, and if I look at it through a tool such as PE Bear, you'll notice something of interest. This has no imports. There's absolutely no imported APIs directly from this executable, yet it will run fine. And the reason is is because of that dynamic API resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this executable with Ghidra so that we can get more of an idea of what's happening under the hood. So I'm just gonna drag it into my project and I'm gonna leave the default settings on. You'll notice straight away it says delay imports detected, which aligns with what we saw with this, not importing any kind of DLLs or APIs. So let's hit okay and let's double click on it. When it loads, what we're gonna do is analyze it. So we're just gonna hit yes, and this is gonna analyze and we're just gonna keep the defaults on. So let's hit analyze. You'll notice straight away on the right hand side, if you've got the strings window open, is that daemon.x64.exe has been found. You'll also notice that there are these other string values that have just been found. I'm just going to hit yes and go to the entry point. Now, the other string values that are found are a little bit interesting because whenever you've got a string value that mentions something like system32 and syswow64 in the context of malware analysis, this is defining the executable that is going to be injected into for that particular implant. Now, there is also a mention of something that looks like a user agent. So this is likely a forgified user agent that's going to be used in command and control activity. And there is that daemon.x64.exe. Daemon is the standard name of the implants used by the Havoc framework. So let's go to the entry point. One of the ways that we can do that is just hitting G and going entry. And that's going to take us right there. Now, one of the things that we can begin to do at the start of analysis is understand the calls that occur. So we can hit display function call trees and down the bottom, that's gonna give us any incoming or outgoing calls from the entry point. Now, because this is using some sort of dynamic API resolution, one of the things that I might wanna look for is calls to the GS or the segment register. And the reason is because this contains something known as the thread environment block or the thread information block. And that's gonna contain something known as the process environment block or the PEB. And this is gonna have pointers to structures that allow us to do stuff like resolve APIs. Let's take a search and I'm, I'm just gonna search through the program text. I'm just gonna hit GS and just search for that for the time being. And we're gonna look for probably all fields and just hit search all. Now we've got three hits back, all of which relate to GS and 0x30. So the offset of 0x30, when it's added to the segment register address is going to get the thread environment block. And this is gonna be able to be used in order to resolve APIs. This is a little bit interesting. This might actually explain why we're not seeing any kind of imported functions because they're done at runtime. Let's follow along and straight away, if you follow the first one, you will notice some interesting values, zero X and then a string. And this goes on almost like it's running in a loop. And what it's actually doing is resolving the APIs that are necessary for the rest of this to function. And so if we look at the Havoc framework, so I've just got it downloaded from GitHub here and we look at the payloads and we look at the daemon and we look at the source we have the daemon.c file. It gives you a good idea of the process that needs to be taken here. So it needs to initialize the pointer, the modules, and the Windows 32 API before it can do anything. And so if we actually look at how that's done in daemon main, there is this call to the daemon routine at the end here. But first off, there is instance being defined on the stack and then the daemon init. So if we go down to the daemon init method, you'll notice that what it does is it's resolving all of the different modules. It's got all these loader function address that's being used in order to get the different APIs. And because we know that this is actually related to the hashing algorithm and resolving those APIs, 
if we go down, this is actually going to run in order of exactly what we see in the code on GitHub. So the first hash is going to resolve to NTDLL, and then the next one is going to resolve to loader get procedure address and then the next one is loader load dll and so on and so forth now if we look carefully you'll notice that on the left hand side we actually have the raw assembly values so that the hexadecimal that's being used to interpret this instruction if we actually look at it backwards so we have this 70 e uh, 70 e6 1753 we have 70 e6 one seven five three backwards and these constants can actually be used to build out yar rules that's able to detect this c2 framework or at least the hashes tied to api calls used by this particular framework so this is actually quite useful and this is actually something similar to what mb research has done definitely go and check out his stuff i'll link it in the description below but let's see how we can turn a, this information into a yara rule that's then going to be able to detect more variants of the havoc c2 framework loaders or daemon executable so i've started up a template here that can be used and first off we just have some comments so this just gives a little bit of metadata but we don't actually need this we also have the actual metadata associated with the yara rule so in this particular case i'm just going to give it a description one of the things that i've included is mention of a hash and so there is actually a virus total yara ci that can be used with your github repository to essentially test your rules and see if they hit on particular binaries based on their hash so in this particular case i've included the hash so that when it gets committed to github it's going to run the checks against it sitting on virus total and confirm that it actually detects on this malware now one of the things that i want to do is actually create the rule though so we've got pretty much all the metadata that we need associated with this and now what i want to do is actually look at the byte patterns if we open this up in gidra once more what i actually want to be using is hexadecimal values. So if you're creating a normal Yara rule, you can specify a variable. In this particular case, this could be string one equals test ASCII wide. And so the ASCII and wide modifiers are used to determine whether it's going to detect on ASCII strings or Unicode strings in the binary. So what this means is it's actually detecting on both ASCII and Unicode strings in the binary. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, if we look at our sample, it's a, it's a great way to demonstrate the difference. So we do have this ASCII string, which is daemon.64.exe, that is within the binary. But then if we look at something like our user agent, you'll notice that this is actually Unicode. So we have null bytes in between each character, which means that if we're not looking for wide, we're not actually going to pick up on this full string. And I'll prove it to you. We have notepad.exe, and now this uses Unicode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to notepad.exe, and we're going to get rid of the wide modifier. So we're only looking in ASCII strings. Now I'm gonna make this all of them. Now I'm gonna open up Yara. So I'm on the desktop, I'm gonna run Yara. This is just called Yara template. And now I'm gonna specify what I'm actually running this against. So we have our Havoc and we have our executable here. Now, if this hits, we will have it bounce back to show that it actually hit on the rule, but there was nothing. There was nothing that bounced back. Now let's modify this to wide. So it's looking for both those types of strings. And now suddenly you'll see it bounces back and says win havoc c2 daemon hashing to say this binary matched on our yara now we actually don't want to be looking for these strings what we want to be looking for is the hashing routines so we're actually going to use the bytes in the hashing function as opposed to using a string to do that we're going to go back let's go to our entry point let's go into our function Let's find the function that does the resolutions. And we've got them here. And really, we want this value of the API hash. Let's take this byte string here. And we only want that value. So it's 53 up to 70, 53 up to 70. Now, the way that we actually specify bytes as opposed to strings in ER rule is through the curly braces. So it would look something like this. So this would be API 1. And we could do this for every string right so there's api1 api2 would be the next one so go down up to b6 
Then we have API 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I'm just going to go through and create this and comment it. So let's do a time lapse. As I'm going through, I just realized that uh, there's that they resolve NT create event twice. Well, I guess I could make a pull request and become a contributor, but I don't really want to. Worth noting that you probably don't need this amount, but it's always good to have, I guess. I feel like I missed some with the copy and paste because there's also this one, P4C9, and I don't actually know which one that is. I think I I think I missed some or doubled up here, so they might not actually be accurate with what they result to. But nonetheless, they're pretty close, so. All right, so I feel like maybe I duplicated some of the byte patterns or doubled up or something because there are a couple <laughs> left over, that one and that one, before we reach the end of all that routine, which I I didn't have a name for. So <laughs> I might have, might have messed up with some of this copy and paste. I mean, there's already an... Which one of these is doubled up there? <laughs> Right there, that's a double up right there, which means everything needs to shift by one. And just like that, we have all of 59 of the hashes that are being resolved and what they resolve to by comparing them to the daemon.c code on GitHub. We actually have a complete rule here now. I know it's still called Yara template, but we could just look for, in, in this particular case, I've just put any four of these coming up to actually find samples that work in pretty much the exact same way, unless they are actually just other Havoc samples. So let's give it a shot. I will just say, I've got to get rid of any, any isn't, isn't an accurate word here. We just need to say, and four of them. Nice, my rule compiled, it worked. I'm gonna give it a scan. And so my scan has finished on, on Unpack Me and I have 10 matches in a 12 week look back period. So we've got 100% coverage and you can see it is also hitting on these other Win Havoc rules. So W0, W1, these were the rules that were created by MB Research. So I know that there's a pretty good chance that we've done a similar thing to detect this malware, but we've just got our one rule and we've picked up on all of these. So 
that's pretty great. And so I'm going to run a scan as well through hybrid analysis. We'll run a hunt. And so you can see straight away, we have now 19 files that have come back and we've got 10 out of 364 malware. And there's plenty of malicious samples that have come up here. You can see daemon64.exe as well. If we go across a couple of pages, all these malicious, go to some of the further pages, malicious, malicious. This has no specific threat found. So this might actually be a little bit interesting to take the sample and just see what it's actually hitting on and why it hasn't been flagged here. And also just compare it on something like virus total. So you can see that even though this came up clean using hybrid analysis, it's actually malicious and a shell code loader for AVEX C2 as well. So we're looking good. Everything that we are actually looking at here, this is the DLL variant. We're actually picking up on this malware. So we've just created a pretty comprehensive Yara rule to detect this malware and like-minded malicious samples. And we haven't had to go through too much effort. And if we go back to our sandbox, we can run that same rule against the Havoc sample. And we can see that it hit. We can also use a TAC S, and this is going to elaborate on every single hit in the sample. So we can see that every single one of our API hashes match, every single one of our byte string that we're looking for match, and we're good to go. We've got a Yara rule that can be used pretty much in production now. That's it, that's all I wanted to show you today. Uncovered how you can go about creating Yara rules that use byte strings by looking at binaries that use dynamic API resolution within Ghidra and using that to our advantage. Any questions, comments, feelings, thoughts, anything else in the comment section below, and I will catch you next time.